The age-old religious wars have now once again made it to the shores of the west. Once more we enjoy the jihad waged upon our calm, temperamented nations. Once more we read the prophetic words of Enoch Powell's Rivers of Blood speech. Oh how much do we enjoy this mismanagement of the West. And so, what are we talking about? Why is the Islamic Jihad allowed to conquer us? Of course it's that damned religious tolerance we hold so sacred. I must confess, I am an atheist or agnostic or whatever the hell you want to call me. Call me hyper-skeptical, but I doubt that. I've been seeing more and more conservative Christians take note from Jordan Peterson and present themselves as atheist or avoid the topic in general. Not because they actually are, but rather because they seek to gain some sort of undue authority, if you will. Peterson just reached a stage where he doesn't bother to try and hide it anymore, and yet his fans will rush in to claim that he's not a Christian, even though everything he says is just a rehash of every Christian apologetics argument we've dealt with in the past. It's all rather sad to watch, actually. But it's also rather funny in other ways, considering all of the time such people typically spend crying about so-called identity politics. And yet here they are, trying to artificially boost their position by invoking a false identity. That part at least is rather funny to see. I could of course be wrong, there are, after all, plenty of white nationalist pieces of shit who are atheists as well, but most of them don't go around favouriting comments stating God wills it, and failing to challenge claims about how atheism has no future. I'm going to go with the facts that in all probability, you're just lying here to try and gain some false authority. But in returning to what you've been talking about thus far, what the fuck are you on about? I get that you're Dutch and I'm British, but I'm British with family in both the Netherlands and Norway, of whom I not only talk to, but visit regularly. What bloody jihad are you on about? Because all I've seen in your video so far are Muslims partaking in a demonstration. Is marching now considered part of Islamic violence? I always thought the right to march was covered under protest and free speech, a vital part of democracy, not Islamic theocracy. I had no idea that it was actually all part of some ancient religious war. Do you want us to ban Muslims from marching? Because that seems to be what you're suggesting here. These aren't just visuals in the background, they're visuals in the background that you selected to validate your point. Also, Enoch Powell was nothing but a fool. Thus, for you to label his words prophetic makes you the greater fool by proxy. Insert obligatory Star Wars quote here. For those of you who have been spared knowledge of Enoch Powell, he was a British Conservative Member of Parliament. He went down in infamy for his 1968 Rivers of Blood speech, which famously had Powell open with what was likely a fabricated story about a working class man who he'd apparently got into a conversation with, and that working class man had ended their conversation with, quote, in this country in 15 or 20 years time, the black man will have the whip hand over the white man, end quote. Now a little more than 20 years have passed since 1968, and as you are hopefully aware of, the black man has not magically enslaved the white man. But Enoch used this anonymous quote as a springboard to go on a frankly absurd rant about the influx of Commonwealth citizens to the UK, namely people of African diaspora who had been enslaved and shipped about by the British during the time of empire. You see, during the Second World War, the British economy tanked and we needed more workers as well as soldiers. Sold on the lies of the motherland that welcomes all of her children, many of these people arrived to be met with open and unending hostility. Hostility which acted as the bedrock for current ethnic relations in the UK. Over time, politicians were finally dragged out into doing something about the matter, bringing us the Race Relations Act of 1968, which made it illegal to refuse housing, employment or public services to a person on the grounds of colour, race, ethnic or national origin. That was the basis for Enoch's speech which drew on all the mainstay cliches about immigration that we still hear today from the contemporary racists. Perhaps the best example of this comes in the following quote. They found their wives unable to obtain hospital beds in childbirth, 
their children unable to obtain school places, their homes and neighbourhoods changed beyond recognition, their plans and prospects for the future defeated. At work they found that employees hesitated to apply to the immigrant worker, the standards of discipline and competence required of a native-born worker. They began to hear, as time went by, more and more voices which told them that they were now the unwanted. They now learned that a one-way privilege is to be established by Act of Parliament, a law which cannot and is not intended to operate to protect them or redress their grievances, is to be enacted to give the stranger, the disgruntled and the agent provocateur to pillory them for their private actions, end quote. None of which had any actual basis, of course. He also talked about the facts that, quote, it almost passes belief that, at this moment, 20 or 30 additional immigrant children are arriving from overseas in Wolverhampton alone every week, and that means 15 or 20 additional families a decade or two hence. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. We must be mad, literally mad as a nation, to be permitting the annual inflow of some 50,000 dependents, who are for the most part the material of the future growth of the immigrant descended population. It is like watching a nation busily engage in heaping up its own funeral pyre. So insane are we that we actually permit unmarried persons to immigrate for the purpose of founding a family with spouses and fiancés whom they have never seen. End quote. Because apparently there's nothing as scary to a racist as the children of a different ethnicity. But one thing I did find missing from the racist rants of Enoch when compared to contemporary racism was any mention of Islam at all. Now I get that Islam isn't a race, but racists rarely give a crap about reality. You can't go looking for the logic behind racism, much like homophobia, transphobia, etc. They use the word Muslim as synonymous for anyone with Middle Eastern heritage, and then switch to the whole Islam is just a religion when someone calls them out for doing so. But anyway, outside of those of African diaspora, the only other group Enoch mentions are the Sikhs and their quote, campaign to maintain customs inappropriate to Britain, end quote. So, um, how, in any way, are Enoch's words prophetic to what is going on in Europe in relation to Islam? In summary, I conclude this. Your prophet is about as cheap and nasty as the one of Islam. So today's video is a response to White Owl's video titled Alt-Right Hash Hash Atheism. Now we've done what? The first 43 seconds of a 5 minute 43 second video. And I already have just short of 2 pages of script. This is... This is gonna be a long one, isn't it? So here we stand at the precipice of our civilization, and we all wish to save it. And in this video, we question what this religious tolerance is all about. As that famous quote said, tolerance and apathy are the last virtues of a dying society. And in the spirit of this blind tolerance for religion, I ask, what is religion, and why does it get a protective status? The religion doesn't. Its adherents, which are living, breathing human beings, do. And this isn't the result of apathy. This is the result of empathy. It's the result of me, a non-Muslim, being able to look at your typical Muslim and see part of myself, even if we disagree on religion. You see, they're not just a Muslim. A Christian is not just a Christian. And I am not just an atheist. These are singular traits used to divide us, to sow fear and hatred towards one another. And yes, religions have played a large part in that historically. But almost all Muslims that exist share one thing in common. They were raised in Muslim homes. And the same is true of Christians, and Sikhs, and Hindus, and so on. Yes, there are converts in many of these religions, others not so much. But the vast majority of people are part of their religion, not out of informed choice, but their geographic location at birth. 
or at least the religious nature of the family they were born to. So the whole premise for your video is off. Religion does not get protected status. People, adherents of a religion or none, do. Now yes, there are cases where this distinction has been lost. Most often in Europe and the US, this occurs with Christianity. Anything labelled religious freedom, as in the Religious Freedom Bill, is typically a Trojan horse designed to exempt those of the Christian religion from having to treat certain groups as LGBT plus folk and women as equal citizens. And the secular community is up and at it in tackling said religious violation of both human and civil rights. Now does it happen in other instances with other religious groups? Yes, but to a much lesser degree and we can still tackle those cases without having to pretend like there's some sort of war or invasion going on. As for the quote you gave, it's famous amongst neo-Nazis, often attributed to Aristotle, but never actually written down anywhere by them or anyone who knew them. Also, being a well-known quote doesn't make it true, genuine or fake. It just means that it ticks all the boxes of being memorable and easily manipulated to serve someone's needs. So in all, you don't seem all that well informed about the subject. There are more than 2400 religions in this world, but of course to the Christian there is only one true religion, and to the Jew there is only one true religion, and the same goes for the Muslim and probably the rest of the 2400 religions. As an outsider it's quite tedious to play these games with adults. They quite easily reject the religion of Zeus and Thor, but their own religion is sacred, and under the motto of this special religious tolerance that the West preaches, we now have a continued religious turf war in our own backyards. Where is this turf war? I hear this claim all the time, but whenever I actually ask the person for the basis upon which it's made, I get nothing. The closest I get is people seeking asylum, or a few scattered incidents which happen to have been carried out by members of Islam. And yes, sometimes religion is involved. Religion makes good people do bad things. That's a reality I am very aware of, thanks to Christianity. But where's the war? Where are the sides, the battlements, the leaders? There's no such thing happening in the Netherlands, I know that for sure. I mean, let's just think of this from a logistic sense. Islam is patriarchal, much like yourself and Christianity. If Europe were an active war zone, why then would they bring their children and their wives to what you believe is effectively the front line of a war zone. It makes no fucking sense. People are running away from the war zone, not towards it. Also, actual religious wars don't require different religions, merely different churches or even sex. Do I have to remind you of the 30 year war which tore through Europe and wiped out as much as 50% of the total population in certain districts of Germany for example? How about the Nazis and their Christian Reformation during the Second World War? Or how about the Irish conflicts between Catholics and Protestants? Conflicts which by the way have actually threatened to resurface with Brexit and the DUP slash Conservative coalition. Holy Cross Catholic Primary had a pipe bomb delivered to it in 2017. If you don't know about the Holy Cross dispute, in 2001 through to 2002, children were having to be escorted from school by military personnel. Meanwhile, Protestant groups attempted to throw rocks, urine, acid and even pipe bombs at said children. If you think that Muslims being allowed to move to Europe is the cause of religious violence, then you have a very selective mind. It is well known that Christianity is dying in the West. This happened after a successful scientific war against the church. We got Darwin instead of Jesus, and I think that's a good thing. However, it seems that the atheists and Darwinists are losing their fight against the Islamic Jihad that we are currently enjoying. And so many atheists are now in the pickle where they are fighting against religion, but it seems the more successful they are, the more Islam and degeneracy is pumped into their nations, which in itself is quite a contradiction. Yeah, the pretense that you're an atheist 
doesn't really work when you start firing off assertions which are completely ignorant of what an atheist actually is, such as a claim that we've replaced Jesus with Darwin and use labels such as Darwinists. Like, this isn't simply Christian lingo, this is younger creationist rhetoric. Though funnily enough, I've also heard it being used by Darwin apologists when they try to discredit the scientific theory of evolution. Also, I think you've shown your hand here. You refer to the Enlightenment period and thereafter as science has worn Christianity. What exactly does the word war mean to you? You've watered that shit down so much that it has no flavour. It's just a meaningless buzzword thrown about as an attempt to fill in for a lack of argument. And it's not impressive. As for the contradiction, the only contradiction here is that you seem to be referring to degeneracy from not just a religious perspective, but specifically an Abrahamic monotheistic perspective whilst trying to pretend to be an atheist. Now maybe you are. Maybe you're just one of those ex-religious types who clings onto their religion even though they've lost their belief in the deity it centres around. Now personally, I consider that less likely than the probability that you're just some Christian piece of shit playing dress up to try and get us to take you seriously. But I do acknowledge it is a possibility. But either way, you are the contradiction here. Secularism is successfully holding itself in the West whilst simultaneously emerging in the East. To quote Mariam Namazi, the internet is doing to Islam what the printing press did in the past to Christianity. End quote. Secularism in the East is growing, and it's already built up to the point that people are starting to come forward even publicly about it. And yes, they are met with vitriol and violence, very similar to how atheists in Europe were once met and in some instances still are. The larger setback to the secular movement in the West has not been Islam. It was the election of that orange clown across the pond and everyone he's filled his cabinets with since. Now if you have to lie about that fact to try and dupe some kid who is equally, if not more ignorant than yourself on the internet into becoming your follower, that's just fucking sad. So I wonder what sort of shit you'll roll out next. The West itself is rejecting the authority of Christ and enjoying the feminist and Marxist takeover of their culture. And at the same time, by accepting these secular and atheist values, they lose their defense against Islam. You know what? I think I'll just stop here at 2 minutes 8 seconds in and return to deal with the rest of what White House says in a second video. Trust me, things are about to get a whole lot worse and I'd rather take my time with this one and tackle as many of the points in detail as I can. Including this one that just clinched the deal on you clearly not being an atheist as you claim. So consider that snippet a little flavour of what's to come that I'll also address at the start of the second half. I hope you found today's video interesting, especially the whole history lesson surrounding Enoch Powell and his racist ignorance, none of which came true, I must add. So to you lot viewing, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, I'd just like to say a few things here at the end of the video before you go. First, I'd like to thank everyone who's ever donated to the channel via Patreon, giving a special thanks to the following people. Hannah Banghart, Matthew Kovac, John Schoenrock, Alexander Williams, Ernst Puna, and Daniel Martinez. Your support has ensured this channel its ability to grow over the years and really is the only thing that manages to keep the channel afloat. I'd also like to ask that you comment down below and like this video, as well as subscribe and follow Essence of Thought on Facebook and Twitter. Please also consider following Atheist Alliance International on Facebook, an organisation dedicated to helping atheists around the globe. Any comments utilising language which insults others on the basis of perceived gender, sexuality, ethnicity or ability both mental and physical will be removed immediately and the commenter may be blocked on the moderator's discretion. Let's keep this space one which upholds the humanist values. Thank you.